Hi guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan podcast. And on this podcast, we will share the patient's personal story with battling kidney disease, dialysis, transplant, and more. Guys, we'll also share stories of hope and encouragement for those that are in need of a living kidney donor. We will also advocate for them, a living donor, to step forward to give them the miracle gift of life of transplant. Guys, based upon my personal near-death experience with kidney disease, I started this streaming show called Hope with Jonathan and also this podcast, Hope with Jonathan Podcast. Guys, if you want to hear more stories like this, please stay tuned. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Never let hope become a memory. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is in collaboration with Impact America Media, where we give hope to patients to continue on, stay motivated, inspire, and encourage them to continue in the journey. For more information on Impact America Media, please visit impactamericamedia.com. Again, Hope with Jonathan podcast is in collaboration with Impact America Media. Hey guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan podcast. Thanks for all the support for the podcast. Also for Hope with Jonathan. Definitely appreciate it. If you're interested in helping out and supporting what we're doing with Hope with Jonathan and the Hope with Jonathan podcast, you can definitely do so by clicking on the listener support. Also, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, We're also on YouTube and you can find us also on TikTok. All you have to do is type in Hope with Jonathan and you can find Hope with Jonathan podcast. You can find us on almost all platforms, uh, mainly on Spotify and Apple podcasts. Um, We're on some others, but feel free to find us on any platform that you can. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in and listening to Hope with Jonathan. Appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Um, The prednisone um, harmed my kidneys and my creatinine jumped from like 1.0, 1.2 to 2. And it stayed stable for about another year. And then this past year, like a year ago, I got mucor uh, mycosis, which is a invasive fungal infection. And I got it in my sinuses and they had to use very strong antifungal medication. Um, and that is ultimately um, what destroyed my kidneys. My creatinine jumped from like 2.2 to three, 3.5. And then the past year, um, it's just slowly been, my creatinine just is slowly getting higher and higher. And my current GFR is about 10%, meaning I have about 10% kidney function. Hey guys, this is Jonathan, the host of the Hope with Jonathan podcast. And hey guys, Hope with Jonathan now has a website, www.hopewithjonathan.com. 
where you can go over and find out where to follow us on all of our social media links, our podcast, our YouTube channel, and much more. Again, guys, for more information on Hope with Jonathan, you can go to www.hopewithjonathan.com. Welcome back to the Hope with Jonathan podcast, and I'm your host, Jonathan Trailer. Hey guys, I really appreciate all the support for the podcast. I really appreciate all the support for Hope with Jonathan Live. Uh, guys, I hope that you guys are finding these podcasts to be uh, very informative, and I hope you guys are enjoying these uh, kidney warrior stories that we're sharing here on Hope with Jonathan podcast. Also, guys, I really, really hope that you guys get a chance to go over and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate it. Thank you again for all those that have went over and subscribed to the YouTube channel. You can do so easily by going over to our uh, website at www.hopewithjonathan.com. Again, guys, uh, over there, you can listen to our podcast right there. Uh, You can watch uh, live streaming interviews over there. Uh, Also, you can look at our friends list over there with many different uh, other people that are that are featuring featuring uh, kidney disease uh, content. Uh, There's some awesome, awesome people that I'm featuring over there uh, that I'm, you know, good friends with. Uh, I've either been on their podcast or show or interacted with them in some way. Uh, So guys, definitely go check that out. Also, if you want to contribute and help us out, uh, maybe try to, uh, you know, continue this, uh, continue this work that we're doing with Hope with Jonathan. Uh, You can go over there and purchase some merch. Each purchase is going right back into uh, Hope with Jonathan, Hope with Jonathan podcast. So uh, we do have some expenses here that we are uh, paying for. And, uh, you know, it would be uh, helpful if you guys could definitely contribute. Each dollar is definitely definitely appreciate it uh, also guys uh, we have our uh, paypal account associated there uh, on our website and like i said each dollar uh, each each dollar is definitely appreciated and uh, again we're not all about trying to uh, take people's money or we're not all about you know gaining uh, a bunch of money it's, it's not about that uh, for our own personal needs uh, this is all about support for the show and what we're doing uh, with some paid subscriptions, some website hosting fees, some fees for the uh, the hosting the the live show and things like that. Uh, again, guys, just just keep in mind that uh, Jonathan is a a patient first, you know, and I have uh, expenses as well that I have to cover monthly uh, for my own personal care as well. And uh, again, Hope with Jonathan is all about helping people, and uh, Hope with Jonathan is uh, all about. Uh, you know, uh, helping people in need. And uh, I do it out of the abundance uh, of my heart, the love of my heart. I do it uh, as a passion of mine. And I'll continue to do so even if nobody ever contributes. But there's been a lot of you that have contributed. And so I want to send a super shout out of love um, to those that have uh, been able to go over and uh, check out our merch line and, and buy some merchandise to help Hope with Jonathan. Man, that is that is awesome, and it's really, really appreciated. Uh, but again, guys, uh, thanks again for all the support for 
for uh, the show. And uh, on today's podcast, we have a, a, a special warrior that we're featuring today. She's not only in need of a kidney, but guys, uh, this patient has already had a lung transplant. So she's already living life uh, as a transplant warrior, an uh, organ transplant warrior. And uh, she's she's uh, rocking life right now with a, with a lung transplant. And now she's in need of a kidney, guys. And uh, her name is Courtney Smith Hurdle. And uh, she's a she's a really really sweet lady. She came on. Uh, she's a mother, a wife, and uh, she's got some uh, got a got a great story. Got an amazing story. You know, just think about it, guys. You know, for those of us that have been uh, in need of a of a of a kidney, uh, you know, think about it. She's already you know had a lung transplant. So uh, you know, this lady's a strong warrior. She she's an amazing person. Amazing story. And I uh, hope you guys will enjoy this podcast. Uh, like again, her uh, Courtney uh, Smith Hurdle, and uh, she's she's just, she was really really cool and a, a great ho- or a great guest uh, on the show. And uh, it was amazing to have her on. I really really appreciate her coming on and and doing the interview with me. And uh, she's already been featured as well over uh, with uh, Jared over on the Warriors Quest show. So you can check check his uh, live stream interview out as well. Shout out to uh, Jared Brown and the Warriors Quest show for featuring her as well. Uh, Guys, also go over and check out Jared's uh, podcast. He has a podcast as well. So, uh, you know what, Uh, guys, you're going to find out with me. I do not compete. Uh, I collaborate. I network. Uh, you know, there's no need to compete in this thing. I'm all about showing love to other people that's doing uh, positive things in the community. So uh, I, you're going to find out that, you know, I share the love for a lot of different people. And, you know, the, let's talk a little bit about the commercials really quick. The commercials that are inside of this podcast are in no way, shape or form uh, to grab you uh, to uh, try to go purchase something or try to buy something. That's not what it's all about. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've used those uh, commercials to try to help boost uh, some of my friends that are in the community. I call them sponsors. Uh, we're really close and uh, we, you know, we've collaborated and done some things together and that's why I sponsor them. I, w- I want you guys to go over and check out their stuff. And um, so, you know, with uh, KWM, Kidney Warrior Merch, uh, I really appreciate what Kyle's doing. Uh, man, just go go check out his brand new podcast as well. Uh, he, he's doing some really, really uh, awesome things with the uh, Canadian uh, Kidney Conversations. Um, man, that, that, that is awesome what Kyle's doing. Uh, I was on there. I was featured on there. Uh, you know, he called me up and asked me to do a podcast with him. So, uh, definitely guys go over and check out their, uh, KWM is doing great stuff, uh, in the kidney community. Uh, also, uh, kidneytrails.com. Uh, guys, if you haven't been over there already, guys, you're really missing out. Uh, again, guys, uh, www.kidneytrails.com. It's an amazing, uh, website, uh, you know, where they're featuring blogs and, uh, writings and different different articles and blogs that are uh you know uh, surrounded by uh, ki- uh, kidney aspect and and kidney disease and all 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 things kidney is on there you know they've different people's talked about kidney dialysis and their transplant stories and different things like that so it's a definitely a really interesting website uh actually i've i've written some blogs over there as well and i got some big things coming up with uh kidney trails too so Guys, again, you can go over there and check out their website as well. Uh, also, I'm a part of uh, Impact American Media with Mr. Wills Porter. Uh, if you haven't been over to his website at uh, www.impactamericamedia.com, uh, you definitely need to go over there and check out his website as well. Wills is doing great things in the community, transplant community. Uh, Wills being a, a liver transplant recipient, um, you know, Wills is a, a awesome guy. He's, he's doing amazing things in the uh, tran- organ transplant world. So really appreciate Wills for what he's doing. Uh, also, Anthony Reed, like I mentioned before, he's also a kidney transplant recipient. And uh, Kyle's involved because his wife is suffering with PKD and uh, polycystic kidney disease. And so that's how he's involved in the kidney community. Myself, Jonathan Trailer, if you've never heard my story before, I suffered a near-death experience with battling kidney disease. And uh, I had ultimately had an emergency kidney uh, dialysis and uh, ended up surviving that and uh, made it and 
ended up uh, eventually, you know, after about 13 months of uh, dialysis, I ended up getting a gift of life of transplant. And here I am. I started Hope with Jonathan right away, uh, right after I got my transplant. Uh, I've been doing this now. Uh, in September, it'll be a year. So uh, it's been an amazing journey. Again, guys, I'm not going to continue to talk. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight on why I share so much for uh, other people and what they're doing and why, you know, maybe I don't just focus on my content because uh, the way I look at it is we're all in this together. We're all uh, brothers in the battle, brothers and sisters in this battle, and we might as well unite and try to make a united front to get more attention on, uh, you know, organ donation and uh, kidney disease, liver disease, you know, whatever disease that you're suffering with, you know, we might as well unite together and try to get as many eyes on us as we can. So uh, I look at it like this, you know, we're, we're a big family and that's what the kidney community uh, represents to me. But again, guys, really appreciate all the love and support. I'm going to let you guys roll on into this podcast please enjoy this uh for more information on uh Court- courtney smith hurdle she's on facebook and uh, you can go check out uh her uh all over on facebook and uh, i can definitely get you in contact if there's anyone out there that's interested at all being her donor all of the information will be inside of the inter- interview uh you know and if, as you listen to the broadcast uh she'll share where she's uh Uh, currently listed it and uh, I believe right now I can tell you guys really quickly uh, I believe she's uh, listed at Duke University Hospital and so but uh, all that information will be shared right inside of the uh, interview but again guys appreciate all the love and support you guys stay safe out there remember to be mindful of this COVID stay safe mask up Uh, you know continue to use uh, good common sense hand sanitizers uh, separation Uh, all that stuff. So guys, take care. Stay safe out there. Remember to take care of your kidneys. God bless. This is John. Also want to send a special shout out to Philip Harris Jones Jr. from a second chance podcast for joining me on this podcast with Courtney Smith Hurdle. This was an amazing co-host. Philip Harris Jones Jr. is doing great things with the Second Chance Podcast. He's interviewing patients in need. And uh, a little side note, if you don't already know, Philip Harris Jones Jr. is a uh, a dialysis patient who is a uh, kidney transplant recipient. Unfortunately, his his kidney failed. uh, But he's in need of a kidney donor himself. Uh, so this speaks, uh, you know, so so much volumes and uh, of what type of character that uh, Philip uh, Harris Jones Jr. has as a uh, as a as an advocate. And I really appreciate Philip's spirit, man, Philip's passion for helping people in need. I mean, anybody that's willing to uh, help a patient in need and and is in need themselves uh, of a kidney, you know, is is an amazing person, an amazing warrior. So. Shout out, shout out to Philip uh, for coming on the show. Uh, Philip works with organization nonprofit such as uh, Why Not uh, with uh, Edward uh, Drake. And I uh, mean, you know, Philip, Philip is a great guy and uh, I really appreciate him uh, coming on, being my co-host on this uh, podcast with Courtney. And uh, he also shares some really good insight on here. So definitely uh, stay tuned for this podcast, guys. Really appreciate uh, Philip's support. And uh, guys, I'm going to let you roll into this broadcast. Y'all take care. Peace out. This is Jonathan. Hey, guys, go over to www.kidneywarriormerch.com. Submit your story today and get a shot at being the warrior of the month. If you're selected as the warrior of the month, you'll get a chance to interview with Hope with Jonathan podcast. Rather you're a kidney warrior, kidney uh, dialysis patient, or even a kidney transplant patient, or maybe you've just been diagnosed with kidney disease, go over to www.kidneywarriormerch.com and submit your story today. Kidney Warrior Merch is a supporter of Hope with Jonathan podcast. Again, guys, that's www.kidneywarriormerch.com.
you strong. Hey guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Trailer, And tonight we have an excellent show for you. Uh, we have a very, very special co-host, uh, Mr. Philip Harris Jones Jr. from A Second Chance. Uh, go like, follow, subscribe over on their YouTube channel and check them out. They're pretty much doing the same thing that I'm doing right here with Hope with Jonathan, uh, inspiring and uh, sharing uh, warrior stories, trying to give them some hope. Uh, but hey, guys, uh, we have a very special guest as well, uh, Courtney uh, Hurdle, and I'm real, real excited to bring her on, share her kidney warrior story and what it's like uh, living as a as a kidney warrior, a mom, and uh, and uh, and a lady that's in need of a donor and uh, also just recently found out that she's a lung transplant recipient as well so guys please stay tuned for this uh interview this is going to be an incredible show let me go ahead and bring on my special co-host uh mr philip harris jones jr what's up phil how's it going tonight brother what's going on jonathan uh everything's well i appreciate you having me on today how are you i'm doing well i'm doing well my friend and uh, I'm really glad you were able to join us, man. How are, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, uh, like I said, getting back on track and uh, making everything fall back in place. Uh, but feeling feeling good, a lot better than I was when I went in. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome, man. I know a lot of us, uh, we, you know, we was praying for you, believing for you, and uh, really pulling for you to pull through. So real, real excited and happy to see that you're able to join us tonight. And uh, guys, stay tuned. Uh, Hope with Jonathan is uh, collaborating with uh, a second chance for the month of June. We got an interview coming up this Saturday with uh, Patrick Huber. Uh, so check that out, guys, over at a second chance YouTube channel. And uh, it's going to be real excited. And Philip also hosts that show on his uh, personal page as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very excited for that show. I appreciate you uh, collaborating with me. Thank you. Not a problem at all. Hey, guys, if you look out there and you're watching this, please smash that share button, uh, interact, drop a comment. Uh, please, if you would, interact in this show. Uh, please share this with your family and friends. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, the warrior that we're going to bring on, she would greatly appreciate it. And uh, I know Philip would greatly appreciate it as well. So if you would, go ahead and smash that sm share button if you would. And also... Over on the YouTube channel, if you're watching by YouTube, uh, go over and subscribe to our channel at Hope with Jonathan. Really appreciate it. Uh, but hey, guys, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Courtney tonight. Let her share her personal story, guys. It's going to be an amazing show, so stay tuned. Hey, Courtney, how's it going? Hey, uh, not bad. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. How are you guys? Doing, Doing well. well. Thank you. Doing well. I uh, definitely appreciate you coming on tonight and sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. No problem. No problem at all. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Okay. Um, so my name is Courtney Hertel. Um, I'm 39 years old. I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, but I am from Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I actually moved to North Carolina about four and a half years ago for a double lung transplant. Um, oh, wow. Because I was, I was born with cystic fibrosis. And um, at the age of 35, I had um, end-stage lung disease. 
and um, I had been listed at Emory for about 19 months, and, and um, they're a much smaller center, so um, we needed to look elsewhere because I have a lot of antibodies. Um, at one point, I had 98% antibodies, which basically means um, about two people out of 100 might be a match. So um, Emory, we, we had to leave Atlanta and come up here to Duke. And um, three days after we moved here, I went into respiratory failure and I um, was taken by ambulance to UNC, um, University of North Carolina Hospital, since I live like a mile from there. And um, it's the closest one to my home. I woke up a week later at Duke on a ventilator. Um, I have a trach scar here. And I couldn't eat. Um, I was basically just sitting there waiting for lungs. And I found out that they told my husband they didn't think um, they would find a match for me because my antibodies were so high. Um, and I was in the hospital about six months there and I got my call for, and my one and only call for lungs, um, July 3rd and this July 4th, it'll be four years ago that I got my lung transplant. So there's that whole, <laughs> that whole episode. And, um, I started taking program, which is anti-rejection medication, um, Everyone takes that if they have an organ transplant, and it's very toxic to the kidneys. Um, I actually require a higher dose than like, the average transplant recipient due to my cystic fibrosis because I tend to malabsorb food, and my body just kind of works wonky, so to speak. And... Um, so I, I was taking the medication, my creatinine, it was stable and normal. It was around 1.0 to 1.2. Um, and then about a year and a few months after I got my lung transplant, I had mild rejection of my lungs and they gave me a large um, steroid taper of like prednisone. Um, and for some reason, um, the prednisone um, harmed my kidneys and my creatinine jumped from like 1.0, 1.2 to two. And it stayed stable for about another year. And then this past year, like a year ago, I got mucor uh, mycosis, which is a invasive fungal infection. And I got it in my sinuses and they had to use very strong antifungal medication. Um, and that is ultimately um, what destroyed my kidneys. My creatinine jumped from like 2.2 to 3, 3.5. And then the past year, um, it's just slowly been, my creatinine just keeps slowly getting higher and higher. And my current GFR is about 10%, meaning I have about 10% kidney function. Um, fortunately, I'm not on dialysis yet, but um, if something doesn't happen in the next few months, I'll have to start dialysis. And um, I really don't wanna do that, especially with everything I've been through. And um, I have two teenagers, they're 13 and 14. And, um, you know, I need to be home. I want to be home, um, you know, with the whole lung transplant and being in the hospital six months, that was like enough to never go back. Um, and then last year with the, the mucormycosis, the fungal infection, I was in the hospital like a whole month. And now because of that, I'm on um, antifungals the rest of my life. So that's wow. pretty much me. I'm also diabetic, but that's because of my CF. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have an incredible story. So you got the lung transplant 
And because mm -hmm. you're on the immune suppressants and a, a, a high level of ProGraph, uh, which you told me backstage you were taking around <laughs> seven or eight milligrams of ProGraph. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, my throat is scratchy. I, it's like my allergies. Oh, it's okay. I just want to apologize. Um, oh, no problem at all. I don't normally sound this like scratchy. <laughs> um, yeah, I was on seven and eight milligram uh, prograph um, before the mucor mycosis infection a year ago. And due to the uh, antifungal medications, um, they have to adjust your prograph level. So it, it got dropped by almost half or a little over half. So now I'm on three milligrams at 3.5 milligrams, but it's still, I mean, I would consider that high, especially being on an anti. Yeah. What a lot of people don't know about uh, immune suppressants and, is they're actually. And yeah, but actually, eight, and it was like. I'm sorry, there was a slight delay there. I apologize. Now, um, what I wanted to tell you, everybody out there was, is uh, what a lot of people don't realize is, is with the, uh, the immune suppressants are actually, some of them are very nephrotoxic. Prograph is one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the ones that they give you to actually protect your organ or your body from, you know, uh, attacking the organ, uh, they actually, that's why they give you the immune suppressants to, uh, you know, sh shut down the immune system. But right. uh, the prograph is actually very nephrotoxic, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't, I mean, prior to my lung transplant, my kidneys were totally fine. And so this happened for me, like, within four years. And wow. I, I was uh, inactively listed for kidney last November. And just like the past three weeks, I was moved to active because my GFR keeps dropping and my creatinine keeps rising and I'm having issues with potassium and phosphorus. Um, I've actually ended up in the ER like three times now because of potassium and um, Ooh, yeah, yeah, uh, like 6.7. Um, yeah. and, and then you got to go through the whole drill of like an EKG and they give you a bunch of insulin yeah. and dextrose and, um, I know, I know all about the potassium. I know yeah, all I mean, about the potassium. It sucks yeah. because I have to like, so growing up with CF, you're supposed to eat like whatever you want because we don't gain weight. And now it's like, oh, well, I can't have potatoes because of the potassium or cantaloupe. I love cantaloupe. I can't have that now. Even yeah. like dark sodas, they're like, oh, that has phosphorus. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to eat? Yeah. Uh, did, have you ever consulted with a renal dietitian? <clears throat> um, yeah, I have. And, and they're the ones who... Um, we're the bearers of bad news as far as diet goes. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, oh, that's okay. Yeah, I, I I feel like, I mean, it has made me a lot more mindful, like what I'm putting in my body, but it just, it, I think like another like slap in the face, like, oh, you yeah. can't, you can't eat this now, even though, it's actually healthy for normal people and you like the way it tastes like philip 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 can you uh enlighten us on how you handle the the renal diet um yeah actually i can i was gonna I was just gonna say something um for me the only thing that i can say in that situation um i know it's hard to to deal with certain foods, especially ones that you may not like to eat. Mm -hmm. um, you have to learn how to cook things to your flavor without the amount of salt and sugars and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to take a lot yeah. of time, a lot of messing up, you know, cooking certain things to figure out 
how to make them the way that you like them to that fits your diet. Um, mm-hmm. Still gives some taste and stuff like that. So one small example for myself is uh, I learned how to cook basically pasta without sauce. Oh, and wow. so what I did was I learned to uh, cook whatever I was putting in it. So if I was making um, macaronis, uh, noodles in it or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, I would make that first like you would normally do or whatever. And then um, as I'm cooking, whatever I'm putting in it, so chicken, shrimp, you know, stuff like that, I will cook mm-hmm. that to mm-hmm. where it leaves kind of like a, a juice, a sauce on the bottom of it. So all that juice and stuff, first off, even if you don't uh, season it, it has flavor regardless. So yeah. add it mm-hmm. with the seasoning. And what I do is I put my noodles in in the skillet and cook it that way. So that way all that juice and seasons and stuff gets on the noodles. So um, you just got to find ways to be able to um, make things to your liking. There's a lot of things out there mm-hmm. that I hate to eat. You know, but I just had to learn how to cook them in a way that I can at least tolerate to yeah. eat to help myself. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the one question right. I did have for you was, what's your PCH level? Um, I honestly don't know. <laughs> so you might want to find out what that level is, because that is affected by your phosphorus and potassium, uh, calcium as well. And so um what I've uh, learned is that a I, thyroid level. Yes. Okay. Um, it. So I actually just got that back um, like a week ago when I had my last labs done, and mm-hmm. um, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it was like 700. Okay, that's actually not bad. Uh, oh, okay. When I had my issue, mine was like almost 3,000. Oh wow! Yeah. Right. So, wow. but what I learned, and I learned probably a little too late because it would have probably helped me years ago, mm-hmm. uh, was that when you have the removal of your parathyroid, which is in your neck, and what they mm-hmm. do is they remove them out of your neck, and they usually place, you know, half of one or a whole one or whatever in a certain position in your body, mm-hmm. um, is that it actually helps your potassium and your phosphorus. Yeah. So, oh, wow. and the thing but, was, I, like I said, I wish I would have known this before when they first brought it up to me. I would have done the, you know, the procedure then. So oh, I actually God. found out on accident. Um, I remember when I was in the hospital, I had the procedure. I had finally gave in. I've been fighting it for like three years, and I remember in the hospital when I was doing my recovery, and I noticed taking my meds that my phosphorus pills weren't there anymore. Oh, and wow. I'm like. I'm like, well, you know, we missing, you know, missing some meds here. And he's like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? I said, my calcium, I mean, my phosphorus pills. Like, he said, oh, yeah, you don't need to take those anymore. I'm like, what do you yeah. mean? He's like, yeah, oh, those wow. get taken care of. When you have this surgery, they get taken care of. Now, there are mm-hmm. some things, you know, you still have to do um, diet-wise and stuff like that to make mm-hmm. sure that it stays there. Um, but I haven't had an issue with my potassium since. And I had this procedure in september of 2019 i've had a couple of oh, my wow. phosphorus because that's not as easy to keep down as potassium yeah. especially when you're on dialysis so yeah. um oh, I didn't know that. yeah so i would say check and see if that may be an option if your doctor does or do not recommend doing it because somebody mm-hmm. might not recommend it because your number may not be as high as mm-hmm. they need to see it for that procedure to happen. So, right. um, but I would say consult with them and, yeah. and see if, if that's a possibility to help you with those two numbers to keep them uh, at, a, at a good level. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for that insight, Phil. We really appreciate it. Uh, the, I know the PTH, that was the one thing that they never could correct when I was on dialysis. They had everything else right, but every time they ran my labs, that PTH mm-hmm. was always jacked up, no matter what they did. Oh, they wow. would adjust adjust this, that, and the other. But of course, as soon as I got a transplant, everything's corrected now. So, uh, oh, yeah. you know, it was it was all kidney related, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, because your kidneys, believe it or not, I mean, people just have no idea 
how much it affects, you know, just everything oh, across yeah. the board. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. uh, people just don't know, you know, what all the kidneys, you know, control, you know, with your blood pressure, uh, your muscles, uh, you know, the way that your brain functions. I mean, you mm -hmm. end up with such a brain fog sometimes from the kidney disease and just all yeah. of the different things that affects your mood, uh, just all kind of different things that it affects. So uh, it's an amazing organ if it's working right. But boy, if it's not, it can cause a lot of havoc. And, yeah, uh, I've definitely noticed some of that stuff. Yeah, for sure. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your support and where you get your support from? Do you have family? Do you have friends? Are you part of a support group or anything like that? Um, so I, I have two kids. They're 13 and 14. And then uh, my husband, they're my main Um, and kids and my husband and then um, my parents they live in Georgia and my brother um, he lives in Georgia as well and then uh -huh. um, I have a lot of local friends that are always willing to help out either like when I've been sick in the past they'll bring dinner or just little gifts and things like that um, I'm not in a kidney support group um, but I am in a lung transplant support group and um, a lot of them can relate to the kidney issues that like I've had to deal with in it and been going through. Uh huh. Sure. So yeah. you're part of you're part of a you're part of a lung transplant uh group but not a kidney uh that's correct mm -hmm. okay um but a, a lot of the lung transplant people that i know and are friends with um they've all had to see a nephrologist or start taking like sodium bicarb or rinvella um to help with kidney yeah. issues so um, oh yeah those are binders but yeah yeah yeah. Um, but I, I don't really, um, I don't really know that many people. I mean, I know some off Facebook, but I, I've never. Yeah. Met anyone in like real life who, mm -hmm. from like a kidney group. Okay. Well, let me tell you, uh, you know, when you're dealing with a chronic illness, you need support for sure. And, uh, definitely yeah. when you're dealing with, you know, kidney disease. So, uh, I would uh, encourage you to reach out to some support groups, uh, whether you have a, a local support group, uh, a lot of times a church or uh, even hospitals uh, can get you in contact with some support groups. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, uh, I can tell you right now, I'm affiliated personally with a support group with uh, kidneysolutions.org. Uh, okay. We meet every Monday and Thursday night. Every oh. Monday, Thursday night at six central. And if you're, you know, if you want to join, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I can definitely get you the information for that. Uh, but uh, support is uh, very crucial when you are battling something like, you know, a chronic illness such as kidney disease. Philip, mm -hmm. uh, Philip, can you uh, enlighten us on what you do for support? Um, yeah. Um, the the main thing. Um, that I think that is important, Jonathan can, Jonathan can contest this, is that family uh, is everything. So um, outside of your immediate family, your kids and, and stuff like that, um, he, when he mentions support group, you don't have to necessarily go to a support group. Um, support right. group definition can be uh, defined in many ways. Um, I also say that you don't have to go to somebody that's already started one, make your mm -hmm. own support group, you know, and that doesn't mean you have to have a support group where, you know, you all meet, you know, every, you know, Monday and, and Tuesday or whatever, but mm -hmm. a support group is just a group of people that help you get from point A to point B in your life and get through your situation. So even if you have to go on, if you're on Facebook and you just find four or five good people that's willing to help you 
and push you along, that's your support group. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about finding uh, people who care about you and want to see you, you know, uh, get well and be able to provide for your family and be able to keep pushing um, and keep fighting. So, um, like I said, me, I'm, I mean, I, I, I know a billion people like Jonathan uh, that mm -hmm. have always that have been in my corner since day one. Me and Jonathan have only been talking for some months now, but it seems like we've been talking for years, you know? And so that's yeah, what you want to find uh, for your support group of people like that that's able to, you know, push you along. Hey, how are you doing your labs today? You know, did mm -hmm. you go to your appointment? How'd that go? You know, uh, how'd you eat and have, you know, what's your diet look like? What'd you eat yesterday? You know, stuff like that to be able to keep us in line um, mm -hmm. with the the regimens and stuff like that that we have to follow on a daily basis. You know, your kids at home, they need to be coming in and, hey, mom, you take your meds today? You know, or what time you take your meds? Did you do X, Y, Z? You know, everybody has to have some kind of role to play because, uh, like me and Jonathan said before, we can't do this on our own. You mm -hmm. know, we cannot do no. this on our own. We need somebody yeah. there with us, uh, standing next to us and, and, uh, and beside us to get us through this journey. This journey is not for uh, somebody that's trying to do something on their own because it's not possible. Right. You need yeah. family. You need yeah. support. You need help. Uh, so I, you know, I would say, uh, because I know it gets, it gets stressful for in-house, um, support. It does because they're the mm -hmm. ones that have to be with you, you know, all day, every day and, and go through technically everything you have to go through, at least on the emotional side. Uh, right, so right. it's good to be able to have those people on the outside that you can call or text and just say, Hey, yep. I'm dealing with X, Y, and Z. You know, uh, you know, can you talk to me? Can you pray for me? Can you do this? Can you do that? You mm -hmm. know, to kind of take some some of those times, you know, off, you know, the people that are in your house. Because I know it can get overwhelming sometimes. Uh, you know, I've been dealing with uh, end-stage mental disease since I was four. I'm 31. You know, mm -hmm. so I know it gets, uh, I know it gets kind of hectic for my support group because they've been dealing with it for 27 years. So, you know, yeah. it's been outside of the people who have passed and gone, it's been mainly the same people outside of people that I've met along the way that are still mm -hmm. here, like Jonathan. Yeah. You know? And so, um, I think, I think for me, the main thing is, is finding someone and people, a group of people that can, uh, relate to what I'm experiencing and what I'm going through, you know, yeah, like, uh, and mm -hmm. share that, that common experience, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you're experiencing some, something that they're not experiencing or maybe, uh, you know, maybe you got a word for them to help them or maybe they got a word to help you, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll find out that the community is is a uh, is very uh, welcoming and uh, this kidney community is very welcoming and uh, it's it's a large community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure the lung community is as well. I'm friends with uh, quite a few uh, different uh, different types of transplant patients. I'm I'm good friends with a, a liver transplant recipient, Wills Porter, and uh, you know okay. so I, I welcome all transplant uh, recipients. Uh, you know I don't just dis disassociate. I'm just a kidney, <laughs> you know, transplant. So uh, you know I got respect for all of us. And uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day wherever you can find your support uh you know if it's in a lung community or you know if you want to you know find a kidney community as well that you can find support in i think uh you know it's definitely beneficial and uh, it's definitely needed uh mm -hmm. for uh, you know not only for uh the mental side but just you know to have that you know common bond you know with someone yeah, uh, yeah. That, you know, so where are you uh, currently uh, listed at for transplant? Um, I'm at Duke University. Okay. Duke University mm -hmm. in uh, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, in Durham, North Carolina. Okay. And how long have you been listed on transplant? Um, so inactively, I've, well, total, I've been listed about, nine months. I've been actively listed for about three weeks now. Um, yeah. 
Okay. All right. Well, guys, if you're uh, watching this show and you come across, I got some information scrolling at the bottom of the screen. And uh, if you guys are interested at all to uh, be a, a test or be a potential donor uh, for Courtney, the information's there. Uh, the phone number's there as well. I also will have it in the uh, description and in the notes as well uh, for you to refer back to. Uh, so uh, definitely, we, we can definitely get you the right information. And uh, we're going to we're going to take a quick pause uh, to let everybody kind of reset and uh, get a quick drink and then we'll come back and finish out the show. OK, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to Hope with Jonathan, and we're here with our special guest, uh, Courtney. We got a co-host, Philip, and uh, hey guys, I want to welcome you back to the show. I'd really appreciate it if you guys would share this uh, with your family and friends, and I uh, definitely want to uh, get this out there uh, to everybody. And if you get a chance to go over to our YouTube channel at Hope with Jonathan, and please uh, like, follow, subscribe, uh, we'd really appreciate it. But uh, hey, Courtney, I had a couple more questions for you before we right. go ahead and conclude this show. Uh, again, I want to really thank you for coming on and uh, doing the show tonight. Yeah. Uh, you have an amazing, amazing story. So why don't you uh, tell everybody right now, uh, do you have any potential donors at, at the moment? Um, yeah, I actually do. Um, I have one potential donor. Um, they've already done some blood tests and they've come back as a match. Um, they are actually coming up the end of June to be evaluated and, um, I guess go from there. Um, yeah. Okay. So being that you've already had a lung transplant, do you think that, you know, what do you, what do you think is going to happen when you have a kidney transplant? Have you already kind of looked and seen what the, the research and stuff like that is and what that all, you know, entails? Um, yeah, so I've had multiple medical experts tell me that um, if things go as planned, that this should be a piece of cake for me. Um, <laughs> not my words, but, you know, um, yeah, that the hospital stay isn't very long. Um, uh, I've seen some incision scars. Um, I know that it gets placed in the front, um, and usually if you have a living donor that um, uh, it starts working almost immediately. If you have a deceased yeah. donor, then it can it can take several days or even like a week or two, um, and you would have to go on dialysis until it starts working. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you got a lot of the details there. Uh, definitely been doing some of your homework there. Uh, especially with the, the the kidney being in the front. Now, mine mine's on the right side of my okay. abdomen. Uh, Phil, Phil, uh, you had you had a kidney transplant as well. Uh, where they put yours on the right side as well? Uh, yeah, it was in the right side, but uh, in the front. You know, my scar is right above the pelvic area on the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you still have that kidney that uh, ended up rejecting Phil, or did they remove it? No, they removed uh, that one and my original ones. Um, 
Oh, wow. Not too long after because it was causing my blood pressure to skyrocket. Uh, mm -hmm. The adrenal glands that are on top of your kidneys were no longer there, and it was causing uh, my blood pressures to be, you know, 170s, 90s, 100s, you oh, know, wow. yeah. in that area. So they, yeah. uh, I actually got lucky because, see, I, my hospital, um, is actually in multiple cities so um like my oh, okay. i have a uh, i go to kaiser which is well, my kaiser is actually is, is in, on sunset in the hollywood area um oh, okay. and i ended up going to a hospital in west l.a that's also kaiser and um at the time i, I was starting to see this nephrologist consistently uh this is when their all the rejection and stuff happened i was in literally consistently every week you know going to the emergency room for something and and so um you know i formed a relationship with this nephrologist and his name was uh dr parks and i remember he came to me he said man your blood pressure is too high you know you can't live like this you already have other you know underlying issues that you're dealing with as well and so the high blood pressure is not going to help those either so um, he said, I have an, uh, an idea for you. And he said, um, my idea for you would be to remove all your kidneys. Um, uh -huh. he said, they're basically shriveled up, just about gone. He's like, there's no need for them. There's no function in them. Um, and so he said, uh, he said, has your doctor come to you to, to talk about this? I said, no. I said, he's never brought it up. He said, all right. He said, I'll call him and talk to him and see what he says. Very next day, he came back in there to me and said, hey, your doctor said, okay, he signed off on it. And we went on ahead with everything. They went in laparoscopically and took all of them out. You know, I got like real, real small scars um, where they mm -hmm. went in, they went in my, uh, in my back um, from my original ones and through the front uh, for my transplanted ones. So, um, oh, wow. So you don't have so, any yeah, kidneys? Nope, nope. I'm on parasitic oh, wow. dialysis uh, at the moment. They removed yep. uh, all of them. It seems like it's been a lot better actually since they've done really? it. Really? I've had some. Yeah, I've had some some issues here and there just because of the fact that I don't have any, and mm -hmm. you know, even taking blood pressure medicines uh, without taking too much, even taking too much can be dangerous. So. Um, yeah, you know, I've had my, my issues oh, yeah. here and there, uh, yeah. ma mainly when I'm dealing with something. So if I'm not dealing with anything, my blood pressure is fine. No yeah. problems. Everything's, you know, good to go. So yeah. I just try to keep myself out the woods. Like this weekend, my blood pressure was beyond the roof. And mainly most of that is because of uh, the pain that I was in at the time. So oh, it wasn't yeah. like it was just high just to be high or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I want to I want to give you a huge shout out, man, for what you're doing with uh, advocacy and uh, what you're doing with a second chance because Philip is in need of a donor as well. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he's out here helping other patients in need. And uh, here he is. Uh, he's in need as well. So if that doesn't speak volumes of the character that uh, Philip Harris Jones has, I don't know what does. But uh, incredible, incredible individual. And I appreciate you doing this show with me tonight, Philip. Always a pleasure to have you on, my friend. Oh, I definitely appreciate you coming to me and asking me to be on. It was, it was a no-brainer. You know, of course, as long as it didn't interrupt yep. the class. Um, yep. You know, I, I definitely appreciate you bringing me on to hear Courtney's great story. Yep. I love hearing I love hearing these stories. This is a big reason why I do it. Um yep. is to hear these stories and help uh all these individuals that we have on this list yep. to get the one thing I think that we're all looking for, you know, at one point, which is uh a donor. So I uh, appreciate you. Oh, appreciate you too as well. Hey, we want to send a shout out to everybody that's watching tonight. Uh we've got uh Mr. Kidney. Mr. Kidney's in the house, Sam Jennings. So uh, guys, if you uh, haven't already went over and subscribed to his channel, Mr. Kidney, he's a he's a really cool guy, uh, advocate friend as well. Kidney transplant recipient, Mr. Sam Jennings. Appreciate, appreciate you watching, brother. 
And uh, also I want to send a shout out to my wife, Melissa, for commenting. Thank you, Melissa, for watching. Appreciate your support. Um, all of our sponsors, KWM, KidneyTrails.com, uh, Kidney uh, Warrior Merch as well. Uh, appreciate everybody that's been watching tonight and everybody that's been sharing. Uh, we definitely appreciate everybody that tunes in for these shows. And uh, man, it's it's been awesome. Uh, but uh, hey, guys, I wanted to uh, let you guys know. Oh, uh, Patty Ottawa as well. Thank you, Patty Ottawa. And uh, I believe Patty is in uh, uh, Canada. So uh, all the way from Canada. Bless you, Patty. Thank you very much for uh, for watching. And uh, she says she's praying for you to find a kidney. And uh, keep up the great work, team. Hey, Mr. Kidney, appreciate you too, man. You keep up the good work as well, brother. But um, Courtney, I definitely appreciate you tonight coming on, sharing your uh, personal journey, uh, battling not only you know uh, having a lung transplant, uh, but now you need you know a kidney. Uh, so it's an incredible story, uh, and uh, you, you've been a, a yeah. So one more time, why don't you tell all of our uh, people that's watching again where you're listed at and uh, give them that information one more time before we close out the show tonight. Um, Duke University Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. Uh-huh. Um, what? Do you have I missed something of what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was just asking if you knew maybe the transplant coordinator or maybe the phone number um let's see I know the number i can give you nine, the phone okay i don't know the person <laughs> that you would contact um uh -huh. because they have to keep all that separate um, I, understand. I just know my coordinator is shauna mcdonald but okay. um they would have to contact someone else but if you call that number um yeah they can direct you to the right person. Exactly. So that phone number, guys, is uh, plus one nine one nine uh, nine six one three seven 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 seven. And uh, again, guys, I'll have all that information in the description uh, within the video. So uh, if anybody is uh, interested in all to step up and be a potential donor for Courtney, uh, you can definitely reach out either personally to me. Uh, you can reach out to her. She's on Facebook as well. Or you yeah. can reach out to and uh, give us a call or give their transplant uh, uh, hospital at uh, Duke uh, University Hospital there uh, a phone call. And uh, like I said, it'll all be in the uh, description uh, and on the YouTube video. And um, anybody anybody that you want to send a shout out to or thank for being there for you or anything like that before we close out the show tonight? Um. <laughs> I guess my kids and my husband uh, and my potential donor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, real quick. Yes, sir. Mind if I have one question uh, for Courtney. Um, sure. This is something that I, I like to ask because I think it's important. I think it, it adds Absolutely. a step to people uh, finding a reason to donate to somebody. Mm -hmm. And that is, what would a living donor do for you? Um, give me my health back and help keep my lungs healthy because it'll it will help keep my whole body healthy and just give me my life back. Um, I'm having a hard time walking now because of like the fluid, um, and my legs hurt a lot of the time. Uh, I'm taking a bunch of like Lasix every day and it's still not completely doing anything. Um, hopefully like eat some like decent food instead of having to watch every single thing. And just, um, you know, I love life. I think it's like absolutely amazing. And um, when I got my lung transplant, like I, I thought it was like the coolest thing in the world and I thank my donor every day. So this would just keep giving me more, I don't know, appreciation for life and for God and um, letting me be here for my kids and my husband. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now that's, that's beautiful, Courtney. I think uh, you answered that question very well. 
And uh, thanks, Philip. I usually ask that question. You know what? It slipped my mind tonight. So thank you very much for coming on, man, and uh, helping me out with that one because uh, that one slipped my mind for whatever reason. So I uh, definitely appreciate it, my friend. Oh, that's no problem at all. I think that's a very important question uh, because sure for people to hear that, you know, you may not, you have those days where you have leg issues and uh, mm-hmm. things like that, but you have a family to take care of, you yeah, know, yeah. and they need, and they need their mom at the end of the yeah. day. Uh, yeah. So that, I think that's, that's something very important for people to hear is that these illnesses are keeping people away from their families, their kids, their godchildren, the nieces and nephews. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, those are, that's information I think people need to hear to make them want to uh, to be a living donor to, to other people outside of just being a good person. So thank you for yeah. answering that question. I appreciate yeah. it. I mean, I sometimes I sleep like 12 hours and I'm still exhausted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that kidney disease causes chronic f- I, uh, fatigue. Like severely anemic and at worse. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm exhausted like all the time. Yep. And I had to cut out drinking milk, and that's like my favorite drink. I know that's weird. Oh, I already know. I had to quit drinking milk. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, when they told me that in the hospital, like they told me uh, you can't eat cheese anymore, and I was like, just take me out back and like shoot me. me." Because like I was like such a cheese holic, man. And uh, But you – you know, it, it becomes a mindset, though. Like, I realized, I was like, look, if I want to live, I got to do some things. I got to make some mm-hmm. changes. And so yeah. I was like, look, I've got to get a hold of this renal diet and follow it like I've never done it before. And I just, I I yeah. jumped into a cold, a cold turkey. I, I gave up stuff, you know, and yeah. uh, it wasn't easy, but it, it, it just became, and the more I did it and the more repetition of the meals and stuff that I plan, uh, you know, I, it became a habit and, uh, yeah. believe it or not, I'm still as a transplant patient, I'm still following a lot of the different foods and stuff that I was eating on the renal diet. I mean, mm. even though, you know, it, every once in a while I will treat myself to something, but, uh, for me, it's more about now, uh, for accountability, like yeah. we have to be mm. accountable end of the day of you know the types of food that we're eating so yeah uh, you know if I, if I, everything yeah for sure but uh again i want to send a shout out to uh, everybody that's been watching the show again uh saying hello uh we got a new person watching tonight midwest kidney warriors hey i really appreciate you guys watching uh i'm not sure i think it's shane blanchard but uh god bless you guys for watching and uh, again mr kidney uh He's chiming in saying he gave up milk. He's drinking almond milk. So uh, yeah, uh, that's kind yeah. of a. <laughs> yeah, almond milk is not my thing. I, <laughs> I yeah. can't do it. I'd rather just stop drinking milk, period. Yeah, I, yeah, um, yeah exactly. Yep. It, was, it wasn't It was easy to, to give up milk for a while, but uh, I did. Oh, definitely. You know, definitely. And, uh, but okay. Well, appreciate you, Shane Blanchard, for watching Midwest Kidney Warriors. Appreciate you, brother. Um, yep, and he gave up meat as well, uh, Mr. Oh, wow. uh, Kidney. Yeah. Well, we so better she, him than me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm not eating near as much as red meat as I was eating, though. I used to be right. just solid red meat, red meat, oh, red wow. meat. And I'm eating, I'm eating a lot of pork. Uh, I eat a lot of... Uh, of, of chicken a lot of grilled chicken more grilled chicken than anything mm-hmm. uh but uh it's in a you know i try to eat as in in a, a certain amount of ounces you know but um i mean you're looking at a guy who was surviving on cheeseburgers and pizzas at one time so oh, wow. uh, you know i i totally changed my life uh re, you know renal failure completely changed my life so mm-hmm. uh and a lot of it was for the good uh, yeah, so, yeah. You know, but uh, man, we got. Let's see, we got we got some other comments here. He also says that 
got his blood work two days ago. My kidney function is the same as someone with two normal kidneys. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Man, wow. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I was so bad and had a very <laughs> good one for dinner. <laughs> yep. Yep. I hear that. I used to tell them, uh, I used to tell them Midwest kidney warriors to uh, brown it on one side and flip it and give it to me. And that's oh literally gosh. how I would eat it. Literally. Like blue? But uh, yeah. Oh, bloody. I liked it bloody. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, beans. Beans is a good source of protein as well. A little yeah. high in potassium for the yeah. uh, kidney patients, but uh, beans is another good form of protein. Eggs. I ate a ton of eggs when I was on dialysis. Uh, of course, oh, the wow. egg yolk. They say to try to get the egg yolk out of there if you can, but I was like, look, if I got to survive on eggs, I'm going to go ahead and eat the egg yolk. Right. I mean, <laughs> you can't have all these restrictions in my life. Yeah, some, uh, something I like in here. Yeah. The Texas boys know how to eat a steak. Yeah, you did that <laughs> one right on that one, brother. We know our barbecue. We know our steak down here. But, oh, most uh, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I have family in Texas, so I, I already know. Yeah, That's all my family here. does is barbecue. But hey, guys, this has been really fun. It's been a great interview, very informative. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely appreciate all the support uh, as the comments are just pouring in. Appreciate y'all support uh, for yeah. watching. And uh, God bless you guys out there. Again, want to thank our very special guest, uh, Courtney uh, uh, Hertel, for coming on. And uh, man, our, our special co host, Philip Harris Jones Jr., always a pleasure, my friend. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and close out the show tonight. But remember, guys out there, to stay safe out there. Uh, love on someone, it's free. You can love for free, guys. It doesn't cost a thing. And uh, remember to take care of your kidneys. God bless you guys. God bless you. Have a great one. All right. Let me see if I can end this broadcast. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey guys, definitely appreciate you tuning in to the Hope with Jonathan podcast. Again, guys, I really, really appreciate uh, Courtney Smith Hurdle for coming on the show and uh, sharing her uh, her lung transplant uh, warrior story and now in need of a kidney. Man, this is this is an amazing story of uh, you know inspiration. Uh, man, she just you know continues to fight. And uh, we're going to continue to help share for her uh, by, you know, uh, c- continuing to share this podcast. So, hey, guys, appreciate all the love and support for the show. Again, guys, go check out www.hopewithjonathan.com. And uh, for more information, you can follow all of our social media over there. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, listen to our podcast, stream live interviews. You can help uh, contribute by uh, supporting us by buying merch. Uh, you know, there's many different things. You can go check out our friends. We're also sponsoring, uh, showing some uh, warriors over there that are in need. And uh, I've got to get on to it because I'm going to be uh, adding some more to that list and uh, get some more uh, warriors on there that are in need. But uh, hey, guys, you guys uh, stay safe out there. And remember to love on everybody. Stay safe. Mask up. Continue to be mindful of the COVID. And guys, Remember, the most important thing is to love on everyone because it's because it's free. And remember to take care of your kidneys. God bless.